I didn't realize you have to do all of this stuff. So bear with me. Sorry about that. All right. Is it on now? It's showing. It's Yay. showing now. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. Um, Hi everyone, welcome to our coffee talk and the topic for today is coping with the holidays. Um, as we all know, the holidays are stressful, especially for those of us battling with endometriosis. Um, and today we have a very special guest. Um, her name is Bianca Asteris. She is um, the therapist from Silver Linings Counseling Services. Um, she is a licensed clinical social worker with 10 years of experience in the field. She holds a bachelor's degree from Texas State University in healthcare administration and a master's degree from the University of Houston's Graduate College of Social Work. Ms. Astros has experience working with individuals and families who have a variety of personal issues, such as depression, anxiety, stress, family problems, trauma and abuse, addiction, chronic health concerns, relationships, and more. She believes that increased self-awareness can make a huge difference in the, in the ability to grow through these challenges. She aims to provide a connected and supportive environment for people to process, heal, discover, understand, or challenge and change. She also has a history of endometriosis and is, a proud, and is proud to support this community. I'd like to welcome Bianca. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank and for, for those and for those who are joining us, please um, hold your questions till the end. Um, she will uh, basically she'll discuss on uh, coping skills and boundary boundaries for the holidays. And um, if you have any questions, please just post them either in the chat or on the Facebook chat and we will get to them at the end. So thank you very much. Hi, Bianca. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here today. And um, I thank you for having me as part of your, um, your afternoon. So, <clears throat> and <clears throat> yes, this topic is very important um, because not only are the holidays stressful typically, but this year there's a little more involved um, as we'll get into. Um, We've all been um, experiencing increased anxiety and stress with um, different areas in our lives. So, um, so we're going to explore um, boundaries and coping skills uh, for these upcoming holidays. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So boundaries might be needed um, again more than ever, whether it be a difference of opinion or maybe some different behaviors we'll be practicing um, or that are our focus of this, at this time. Um, whether that be in relation, again, to the, um, the things that are going on at this time with the political climate or the pandemic. Um, so um, protecting yourself and your loved ones is something that is paramount this year. Um, so uh, this is, I would encourage you to check into your boundaries when you feel they might be violated in relation to safety. <clears throat> um, so uh, what might this look like? Maybe um, it's about if you're going to visit family um, or visit friends, um, maybe it's about, okay, um, I'm only going to go if I'm allowed to wear a mask, for example, or maybe um, I choose not to visit because it doesn't align with how I'm feeling about uh, this right now, about what's going on right now, or um, maybe it's in relation to endo if you're not feeling up for it physically. Um, so again, just checking in to what is happening for you. Um, but you know, I'd be maybe saying something like, I'd be more than happy to connect with you, you know, via FaceTime, Zoom, um, so that I can see you. Like I, um, maybe somehow creating a boundary where you don't specifically state what's going on, but making it clear that uh, for yourself, that this is why I'm doing this for myself and behaving, you know, accordingly. Um, 
So again, this year is not our usual, but we do have, we all have choices that we are allowed to make. And I think um, checking into that is, um, is important, you know, to check into the freedoms that we still have. And that is that there are choices. So um, some of so maybe some of us are already doing these things um, when it comes to, you know, connecting with people online, um, or um, when visiting family, already wearing the mask, you know, and things of that nature. Um, so so the holidays are, you know, might be a continuation of these behaviors, or if you know you haven't been uh, visiting or doing. Um, um, any of that, then maybe it'll just be, okay, this is, let me reflect on, this is what I plan to do and kind of checking into that. So um, in reference to the political climate, you know, so there's a pres presidential election every four years, you know, um, maybe this is something that does happen within your family. You know, every four years there's, or it could be more than that, but particularly with elections, you know, there's election anxiety that comes up. There's the stress of, um, of that. Um, this year, you know, it's okay to recognize that it's even more polarizing um, and to, um, to know that, you know, you're not the only one experiencing election anxiety or that was experiencing election anxiety or ongoing with, you know, uh, what is happening um, in our nation. So, so maybe this might be an area of contention within your family. Um, therefore, you know, setting a boundary is needed in order to not create discord, or it might be a matter of, um, you know, checking into what you want to do before visiting. So is it, you know, agreeing to not agree, um, for example, I agree we're not on the same page, then, you know, saying that and then say, you know, please pass the turkey if you're with your family. Or if choosing to share your opinion in relation to um, this heated topic, giving yourself a time limit, like, okay, so, you know, um, either verbalizing that or not verbalizing that and just, again, like, okay, for myself, this is, this is how much I'm going to you know, allow for, um, or excusing yourself when it, it's just too much. It's like, I need to take a break from this and, you know, slipping away from the table, or if visiting online, um, choosing to um, change the topic and um, not even saying like why, but just say, oh, so, you know, going from there. So, that's another example of setting a boundary um, without actually saying that you're setting a boundary. So um, sometimes that's easier because when you bring something to someone's attention, then it makes it more of uh, more of an issue per se. So, um, <clears throat> but hopefully, you know, this not necessarily will be a concern, but again, if it is, it's okay to recognize that you do have choices in the matter in order to feel empowered and to take care of yourself if necessary. So, um, so when boundaries come into play, uh, many people consider the boundaries they have with others, but not necessarily with themselves. So um, being part of the Indo community, this might be one that is you know, most important, um, but difficult in relation to self-doubt um, as it pertains to experiences like with our own body or with that of the medical community. So um, this is uh, maybe something that is um, an ongoing work in progress, so to speak. Um, so, uh, so with that being said, um, checking into what boundaries you have for yourself um, and, you know, it, um, I know there's, you know, maybe there's been many times that you've been told that something's not wrong when in fact, you know, there is. So again, uh, in relation to the self-doubt, um, maybe that is where that, that comes up. So um, know that you can, you can take care of yourself 
and that it is important, even more important to have self-care and recognize that it's okay, that, um, that you do take care of yourself and um, that you are important and, um, and to create that. So, um, and maybe so, some, because of the trials uh, that this disease creates are even like, this is not a challenge. And, you know, um, because of the challenges with the disease, they have uh, created um, a lot of self-care opportunities um, that are more power to you than keep doing it. You know, holidays are any different. Just keep, it's even more important in, during the holidays. So. Um, so just with that being said, creating a healthy boundary in, is, in itself is a problem-focused coping skill, uh, which we're gonna get more uh, to talking about coping skills um, as we move forward, but just something to remember. So when you're creating a healthy boundary, you are, uh, you're doing a coping skill uh, for yourself. So if that helps you know, motivate you or urge you to do those things, um, just something to kind of put out there. So, um, so I wanna have a moment um, of reflection for everyone to think about um, their own plans um, of how you're gonna take care of yourself during the holidays. Um, in relation to thinking of what, um, what are some things you might be worried about or feel anxiety about when um, being around others during this holiday season, or if not around others, um, maybe what conversations might come up or um, things of that nature. I just want you to create some space for yourself and be honest of with yourself to um, see, you know, what might come up for you as a way of, um, you know, checking in who might ask this or what I know for sure I would like to decline, you know, from foods to questions to behaviors, um, you know, anything from mask wearing or distancing or topics that might come up every year that you're already kind of dreading. Um, so again, how would you like to honor uh, your time and that of others by thinking about this? So again, I'm going to give you a moment and just pause uh, for you to either write it down or just kind of have, have it um, something that you think you're thinking about. Okay, so um, so I hope that everyone was able to um, kind of think about that in uh, a means of self-care to think about what might be coming up for you. So um, kind of going back into it is okay to have a plan uh, in mind or, you know, it's also okay to take it as it comes, but with having a plan, um, it allows to create some safety for yourself uh, and prepare, uh, preparation, which can help with reducing anxiety. Um, so, um, so part of having a plan is also more of talking about coping skills. Um, so let's talk more about coping skills. Um, uh, and this also checks in the self-care, which, um, as discussed before, can uh, be a proactive, uh, creating proactivity in your life to create a sense of um, time and space for yourself um, to do particular activities ranging from doing the coping skills of maybe having a morning walk or jog, uh, a yoga session, breathing techniques, 
uh, having a calming bubble bath or if maybe um, creating a moment for yourself. So, so um, creating a moment for yourself is um, really allowing for some mindfulness. So mindfulness can be something as brief as um, an example is wake, waking up before other people are awake and having those five minutes to enjoy your morning coffee or tea or whatever drink you choose. And just sitting there, taking in the silence and just noticing the warmth or the coolness of your beverage and I brought my cup to um, provide an example. And just sitting there and taking a taking this, the aroma in, maybe the, again, the temperature and just noticing the, what you hear around you and checking into how your body feels. And uh, maybe it's a matter of noticing when you take, take a sip of your drink, how that makes your body feel and um, allowing yourself to ground and center um, as you start your day before everyone wakes up. Um, so um, connection to self might be one of the most important aspects of this, uh, this holiday season or any holiday season for that matter, um, because we can't control other people's behavior, but we can't control our own. So, um, you know, maybe checking into that by doing these behaviors and creating some, um, again, mindfulness in behaviors, whether it be the five minutes or if you have the time, you know, say you have the time to go, uh, go for a walk or go do yoga um, um, or even, um, you know, if you need rest, then maybe that's what, you know, create that time to allow yourself to rest. So um, I do wanna get into um, actually doing a breathing technique um, in just a moment. Um, I hope that you'll participate with me. Um, so I'm gonna ask everyone to take a moment and uh, we're gonna do that in for just a second. Um, so if you are able to um, find a chair um, that is comfortable if you're not already in one, um, and then I want you to um, place your hand on above uh, on your breastbone and then one around your belt line um, as a way of creating um, your own biofeedback as far as like what you're doing. Um, so your hands will tell you what part of your body and what muscles you're using to breathe. So I want you to um, open your mouth and gently sigh as if someone just told you something really annoying. <sighs> and as you do that, let your shoulders and your muscles of your upper body relax. And then exhale some. And then um, I'm going to ask you to... When you breathe in, put, uh, push your stomach muscles out. I know you can't see my stomach, but um, just push your stomach muscles out as you breathe in. And then as you breathe, as you exhale, blow out and then notice your stomach going in and then your upper body coming out. And just use that as a way of checking into what your body's doing. And another tool for, again, for mindfulness. So again, so um, I'm gonna start at the beginning again with, we don't do the sigh every time, but at the, the very beginning, we do the sigh of <sighs> notice your body relax, your, mus uh, your shoulders and your muscles, and then breathe in, pushing your belly out, and then <sighs> exhale, pulling your body, your stomach, stomach in, And if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. 
and notice the rhythmic nature of your body. And if your timing is different, that's okay. It's really about expansion and then uh, contracting in and giving yourself that space to breathe. Notice how your body is moving. And in this moment, you are in control of what is going on with your body because you're allowing yourself to be in control and you're allowing this moment to relax. And if you yawn, that is only natural because your body's relaxing. Just don't fall asleep on me. No, <laughs> so we're just gonna do that for a few more times. And again, notice you have control of your body and that you are capable of controlling that, that uh, in and out. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> so, uh, so I hope that um, that was nice for everyone. Oh. Good feeling. <laughs> and and um, so I'm going to kind of go back to the um, again with coping skills. And um, so again, breathing is another thing you can do. And the good one about uh, breathing, you know, if you are with family, you know, you can excuse yourself to go to the restroom, take a second, you know, okay, I have this time. I'm by myself, or maybe you might, if you have children, there might be a little one with you, but hey, perfect moment to teach them something new, you know, <laughs> um, and, um, you know, again, it's all about trying to create moments when you're able to, and um, in ways that work for you, you know, um, and, you know, making it happen, so to speak, so, um, so um, kind of going back to um, coping skills might also be about um, giving yourself um, moments or times of reprieve and figure out what works best for you. Again, during this is this year is unpre unprecedented. Um, so maybe not forcing yourself to do many things would be, um, something that is a coping skill for you. So if you are somebody that, okay, uh, a coping skill for me is this, 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 this. Okay. Well, you know, um, if maybe sometimes it is about getting back and going, um, coming back and, um, realizing that you need, you need to rest. Um, kind of going back to uh, talking about the disease um, of endo, um, maybe you wake up and you have pain. Um, it's unexpected and um, you need to, you need to rest, you know, you need to lay in bed if, you know, maybe you need an extra hour, an extra hour, you need a extra a few hours you know um this this is not a time to try and uh, be perfect or try to do too much it might also be a time to um 
do what you can, you know. Um, if you are feeling stressed out and you need a distraction, maybe watching Netflix is an act of self-care and a coping skill. Um, you know, 12 hours of Netflix, that might be a bit much, but you know, maybe, uh, you know, an hour or, you know, again, creating time for yourself that looks good for you, finding what feels good, but, you know, not going to one extreme or the other, um, getting into the all or the nothing, um, more about finding um, something that is, makes you, you know, makes you feel good, creating that time, but also not going to where you're in avoidance and then maybe you feel worse, you know, so, um, so finding uh, a balance is also, um, I guess, an important thing during these holidays and just this, this year in general, you know, um, maybe in the beginning of the pandemic, the only thing you could do to get by was to watch a lot of TV and that's okay, you know, um, if that's what it looks like for you, then, then, you know what, you did the best you could and, um, and it's, um, it's okay to recognize that this is really hard and, um, and you're trying to kind of check it into survival mode right now. Um, so, so maybe with the holidays, um, that's a little bit of what it might look like too, is uh, a little bit of survival and uh, finding what feels good as long as it's not bad for you, you know? Um, so maybe talking to friends or family um, or a therapist, um, it's okay to recognize that you're not doing good or you need support or you need to vet, um, but, it's also okay to take care of yourself. And, um, you know, maybe if you are alone this holiday, um, it's about choosing, you know, venting, getting out, being upset, but also choosing to create a new tradition this year. You know, this is um, maybe a time to see, okay, what is this holiday going to look like for me? You know, um, and, um, being okay with that. Um, so, you know, every year um, we have a Friendsgiving. Um, it's a lot of fun and um, get to see everybody. And I, I, you know, I love it, but this year there's a lot of uncertainty and instead we're not gonna do that. And um, that's, it just is what it is and um, you know, meeting on Zoom and seeing each other's faces and checking in and, you know, and looking forward to a time when we can do that. So, um, so it's, um, it is, again, a year like no other. And, um, but there is, um, you know, things we can do to take care of ourselves. Um, so I also want to talk about another coping skill um, that is um, in relation to, you know, checking into things that we can do for ourselves, creating new traditions, but also that of gratitude. You know, what are the things we have to be thankful for? Um, so I want everyone, again, take a moment. I want you to write down three things that you're grateful for. Um, and it could be very basic or, you know, it could be um, something more so. So I'm going to have a moment for you to do that. Okay, so, um, so I hope um, some things came to mind. Um, 
and I hope that this um, might be something you can do. Maybe you can make it a part of your daily practice um, as we move through the season, um, just to help with, you know, getting through and making the best of what we have. Um, or perhaps this is something you can encourage um, to do with your family too, um, or friends as we move through this time together. Um, and I think maybe that's the, uh, one of the other things to check in into is that you're not alone. Um, we're all doing this together um, and, um, and it's okay that um, whatever you're feeling is what you're feeling, but be sure to, to share with others and, um, and check into that, you know, you have this community of other um, uh, women that understand Indo and understand what you're going through. And um, that is such a great resource and, um, you know, unity and connections, what we need right now. And, um, you know, be, being gentle with yourself um, and, um, recognizing that you are doing the best you can. So um, so just to kind of end on a, uh, a note with everything that I've talked about during this coffee talk. Um, so for the holiday season, um, remember we can look to breathe, we can be present in our surroundings and uh, we can recognize what we have to be grateful for um, and know that we, have options um yeah again not always maybe not the ones we preferred or um maybe not the best but we have options and we can take care of ourselves um and we can come up with a plan um to be in a better state of mind and being so um, i appreciate you being uh, here to being here with me today and i hope i had some um helpful uh, tips and I, again I hope you choose to create a self-care plan for this time and and maybe you'll create a new habit a good habit that will carry on through the new year as well so um well with that being said I am uh I'm going to turn to Maria now um thank you oh thank you that was really great and um as Allison mentioned um, in our chat, it's um, we underestimate how important deep breathing is. Um, quick question on uh, the breathing exercise. Uh, do you breathe in through the mouth or the nose or does it matter? Oh, okay. Um, so, <laughs> that's a good question. Okay, so um, it's in through the nose and not through the mouth. Yeah, I probably okay. should say that so. Yeah, so, but again, if you want to try, if the other way works for you, you know, find what works. And I mean, that's the most important thing. If that doesn't feel natural for you, then if the other, you know, yeah, find what works. And, uh, but the practice for that particular exercise is nose in, into the nose and out through the mouth. Um, let's see if we have any questions. I think um, one of the hardest things that people in the Indo community um, face whenever meeting families or friends uh, is the question about fertility or infertility. Um, whether they just they're deciding to or not you know, pursue that route. Um, and I guess having a plan is a really, really good tip um, in case somebody does ask those pesky questions. Um, are there any other tips to address those questions, those really uncomfortable questions, um, especially with family, um, to not be combative as well. Like, you know, we, we want to be able to respond in a kind way, but yet be very clear of what our boundaries are. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, yes. Yes. Some, the 
questions. So just to kind of uh, reiterate some of the things you were, so you were saying about how um, the difficult questions that might come up around fertility or infertility and um, and any other difficult questions that might present themselves with family. Um, so, um, and not be combative is the focus. So maybe, um, and I do think a lot of it depends on the situation, uh, who the person is asking, but I guess with, particularly with family, um, I would hope that the intention is that it comes from a good place, but, um, it could be uh, about recognizing where they're coming from um, to kind of take the anxiety and the pressure off of you and then address what they're saying for yourself. So maybe like, well, you know, um, as a means not to be combative, like I appreciate it's not I, that you care about, um, you know, about my, uh, about, you know, my, um, that you care about this. Thank you for, you know, um, showing that you care, but, you know, um, ad really addressing like this is, as you know, a difficult topic for me um, because, you know, addressing the fact that I don't know, or I'm uncertain, or I'm not able to, or, you know, whatever that might look like, like being forthcoming you know I mean I'm sure that would end the conversation right there I would hope so you know that they would <laughs> <laughs> you know I um you know and as a way not to be combative is by acknowledging okay I, I understand you care about you know me but also um this is not um kind of showing you don't want to talk about it by sharing like this, or, you know, if you don't want to get into, you know, why um, this is a, um, a difficult topic, or I don't want to talk about it, maybe just saying, uh, thanks for asking, I don't know, or thanks for, you know, um, being concerned, but I don't have any answers, you know, Keep it nice and short. I like yeah, that. Keep it nice, nice and short. And um, so, I mean, you have some options there. If it's like somebody that asks you all the time, maybe then the first option would be the, well, you know, you know, I have uh, this disease and, um, and, and I am not, uh, that's not a capability of mine. So, yeah, shutting it down. So, yeah, yeah. All right, we've got two, two more questions if you have time. Um, one is from Allison. What about when family guilt trips you if you say you're staying home this year? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is a very good question. So um, I would, you know, explore the reasons why they're asking that um, first um like in conversation to help decide how to answer that but um if they are um doing that i mean you could explain if it's based on i guess pandemic reasons i don't know why i did that but pandemic reasons um all right <laughs> it's real i don't know why i did that okay um if it's based on that then um maybe stating your reasons why, you know, like, I don't, I'm, I'm scared for my health. Um, I, you know, I already have health concerns and I don't feel comfortable, you know, with, um, going, going, I, I, you know, maybe also recognizing like, I love you. I want to see you. Um, and then trying to schedule again, some time to meet, you know, FaceTime or whatever, or, you know, doing the drive by and waving if you live in the same place, you know, um, what I mean, you know, just getting creative, I guess. Um, but it's okay to recognize why you're not doing what you're doing. And, and if they don't still don't understand, you know, it might be a matter of um, accepting they won't understand and, you know, doing what's best for you anyway. So 
again, that would be a definite boundary to, to set there. So, yeah. And we have one last question from Michelle. She says, I usually try to take an entire day to rest. My day is Sunday. But how do I do that and not feel guilty, especially when I know there are things that I can be doing, like chores or working out? So, so uh, let me just clarify. So the question was, um, on Sundays, um, I know there's is my day to rest, but I know there's things I need to be doing, or I need to rest, but there's things I need to be doing. And she ha she she usually takes an entire day to rest. So, and Sundays are her rest days. Okay. But how does she do it and not feel guilty, especially when she knows that there's other things to do, like chores and working out? And, you know, we all have a list of things that we need to yeah. accomplish. Yes, yeah. yes, it's true. Yeah. So how to not feel guilty? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it might be about um, recognizing, accepting that Sunday is that day. And again, I'm going to use the word coming up with a plan, you know, of when you're going to do what and um, to help with kind of um, being um, acknowledging that, okay, I do have these things to do and this is what I'm going to do, them, you know, and then so Sunday is that day. So on Tuesday, I'm going to carve out this time and um, or maybe this week, um, I'm going to try to, you know, not do this, but I'll do it, you know, that kind of, it's a time management is what I would say. You know, if Sunday is going to be your day to rest, try to figure out uh, what you want the rest of your, what, what you want the rest of your week to look like. Because, um, and if exercise is one of the things that, you're not going to do. Um, I mean, that's okay. You know, maybe for that Sunday, you know, it, if it's a, a daily exercise, I guess is what, you know, reflecting on if you exercise every day. Okay. Well, Sunday's not going to be that day, you know, like, um, like accepting that that's, you know, what you're choosing to do. And, um, and also, maybe um, part of your resting is taking care of yourself, similar to exercise, you know? I, I think it's kind of, not funny, haha, -ha, but interesting, like with exercise, you could feel guilty, but then when, or you don't feel guilty, but with resting, you feel, you know, guilty. Uh, so, but rest is necessary, you know? Rest, much like exercise is um, good, good for you. So kind of maybe looking where you're putting your value. Um, and if you're valuing rest, then, you know, looking at that as your, um, as your quote unquote exercise, you know, like the same mindset of, okay, I'm going to exercise this day. I'm going to rest this day, you know, like it's, um, it's okay to, again, recognize self care, rest as being as part of self-care much as you uh, exercise is recognized as that so um, i hope that answered your question yes that's actually a really really great way to um to address that um, because i think a lot of us always feel so guilty because of endo we're already wiped out as it is and we miss out on some you know special events or even just don't have the energy to do chores or whatever it may be. And, and it fuels our guilt even more. And I think you're right about just giving yourself permission um, to rest or to do what's necessary to, you know, to, to take care of ourselves. And like Allison said um, on, on the chat is I think we wrongly look at self-care as indulgent instead of, necessary and that's yeah. yeah that's a really great way of putting it um yeah that is good I like that's good. yeah okay yeah well um you know i want to be respectful of your time and you know we can't i i we really appreciate you 
spending the afternoon with us. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us as well. I hope um, all the things that Bianca have presented will help you with the upcoming um, holidays. And, um, and we will have this recording available um, later as well. Um, but in the meantime, thank you again. Um, thank you. I really, Thanks for having re me. I, we I appreciate really, really it. appreciate it. And um, again, many thanks. We really, really appreciate it. Okay. Have Hope a good afternoon. Great. You thank too. You thank so you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. What do you think? Hold on one second, let me end it.